Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Aeroscale, and we have another turning the page for you. This is a brand new release from Osprey, uh, the Newport 11 16 Bebe. I'm not 100% sure on some of these pronunciations. Not a, I am not a World War I uh, airplane expert. I'm just going to give you my impressions of this book by flipping through it and showing you some of the pages. Uh, but uh, I stopped halfway through the title, obviously. It's this Newport 11 16 Bebe versus the Fokker Eindecker. Western Front 1916 by John Gutman. Gutman? Gutman? Oh, I'm not sure there. Uh, this book uh, is 1895 in the U.S., uh, 12 uh, pounds, 99 pence in the U.K., and 1995 in Canada. Um, it is about uh, 80 pages or so. It is part of the uh, dual, uh, Osprey Dual Engage the Enemy series. Uh, it says on the back here the appearance uh, in 19 excuse me the appearance in July 1915 of the Fokker E E1 heralded heralded it heralded it heralded it heralded it heralded, heralded, heralded <laughs> I can't do it heralded a reign of terror over the Western Front that Allies called the Fokker sc scourge the French Newport one uh, one L an L1? I'm not sure what they're trying to do there. Boy, they sure make complicated uh, aircraft designations in World War I. Was, uh, was one type desperately thrown into action uh, to counter the Fokkers. The swirling dogfights between the, the, this fighter uh, and its more powerful but unwieldy sub-stable mate, the Newport 16, and a succession of proven Fokkers, the E2, uh, I guess that's the no, that still doesn't make sense. The E-2, E-3, and E-4 came to symbolize air combat in World War I. This book gives a de detailed look at the development of history of the fighters, contrasting the interrupter gear-equipped Fokker with the more improvised uh, solution incorporated in the Newport, a machine gun fired onto the upper wing to avoid the propeller entirely. The Germans went on to abandon the monoplane in flavor of the new deadly generation of biplane fighters based on the lessons learned from the vicious engagements and influenced by success of the French Newport. So interesting. Um, obviously, you, uh, basically you're talking about monoplanes, which would eventually, of course, become the, the norm once, once people kind of develop the more uh, rigid airframe models and stuff. These monoplanes were basically held together by wires, just like the uh, bi biplanes were. Uh, and they're talking about, uh, in case you're not an, an expert like me, but they're talking about the fact that the machine guns fired through the propellers here on the German plane, and they had a synchronous system, obviously, to have them fire when the propeller was obviously, uh, I believe this is a two-bladed propeller, was was not in the mode of being hit, obviously, versus the the uh, French Eindecker, which, uh, or excuse me, the Newport, uh, this is the Eindecker, uh, the Newport, which obviously had the machine guns mounted up on the top of the wing, so they fired over the propeller, so it wasn't an issue. All right, so a uh, little obvious history lesson there. I'm sure for some of you were like, yeah, I know that, Jim. Uh, so um, anyways, that was for the people who didn't know. Uh, introduction section. Let's go just kind of cover the, uh, you won't get that. Uh, <laughs> Cover the introduction, uh, the it's con table contents the, has introduction, chronology, design and development, uh, technical specifications, the strategic solution, situation, uh, the combatants, combat, statistics and analysis, aftermath, and further reading, and an index. And um, you can see they've got lots of black and white photos in here, reference photos in the time period, lots of good uh, text. There's the chronology part, starting in July 1913 and going all the way through... September, I guess. Oh, sorry, September of 1960, looks like. Design and development. First, I'll talk about the Newport, obviously, the Newport 11, the Eindecker, and they do have some nice color plates in there, like that, that one for the Newport, and then for the Fokker E2. And then they go over the various, but basically it's just a comparison between the planes. But they've got nice little, you know, color photos like this one, or color illustrations like this one with the cockpit interiors. So there's lots of good reference stuff in here for modelers. Just, it's, you know, it's a, it's a history book, but um, it has things in it that obviously will appeal to um, most uh, World War One aviation uh, folks. And uh, the nice little color paintings as well that are included in these. But, you know, just as just a quick flip through like you do at the bookstore, I'm not trying to be an overly critical review. I've not read the book. Um, I don't have time to read them. If you saw the stack of books <laughs> that I have to go through, you'd understand. Uh, <clears throat> now you understand. So, <laughs> 
The uh, this one, uh, it, the, all, all these books are available for more in-depth, uh, detailed reviews. So if you are interested in doing a written review on this book, um, just let me know. Um, publisher at kitmaker.net is my email. And uh, thanks for watching this one. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. If you are on uh, YouTube, please uh, like or subscribe to our channel and all that other good stuff. Have a good day, and uh, we'll see you next time.